Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible tactical skirmish from round 3 of this year's Prague Festival Chess Masters section. Uh, it is Nodirbek Abdusatarov who uh, just recently broke uh, into the world top 10 against the former 2700 David Navara. Uh, okay, now he's 2669 but uh, his pick rating was uh, over 2750, uh, 2751 if, if I'm not mistaken, um, some 9 years ago. Uh, even even higher rated than Nodrebek is now, so uh, a most unpleasant opponent for anyone to face. But this game is so complicated and so tactical, just when you think nothing more can surprise you, uh, more stuff will be presented that will surprise you. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, quite a bit of theory uh, at the beginning, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they will cross swords very, very soon. We have pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. Uh, the Italian game, we have bishop to c5, the Gioco Piano, and pawn to c3. The main line of the Gioco Piano, avoiding the, the strongest continuation, knight to f6, d3, d6, and pawn to b4. Chasing away the bishop, so sort of a delayed Evans gambit. Interestingly, in this position, b4 is the fourth most popular continuation, as same as in the original position where c3 was played. Evans gambit is also the fourth most popular continuation. Here we have bishop to b6 and pawn to a4, preparing pawn to a5. So, of course, a5 by uh, David here, b5 attacking the knight, knight to e7, and knight b to d2. And this is, uh, uh, unless you really know how to play this, this can be very, very difficult. I played this in one of my rapid games, uh, not uh, because I played c3, I of course went for the Evans Gambit, but my opponent declined the Evans Gambit, and in the end I got some similar position to this, and in the end he he just brutally outplayed me. So if you don't know how to play this, you should uh, you should learn it. Uh, it's not as easy as it looks. We have castles here, uh, castles, and then knight to g6. Now, again, a known position. Uh, Fabiano Corwana had it against Anish Giri uh, last year in the Super Bet Chess Classic, uh, and uh, uh, d4 was played also by Fabiano. But now we have e captures on d4, c captures. Uh, there is also a known game uh, from 1990 where knight captures on d4 was played. But here we have c captures on d4, and it is now as of move 12 already that we have a completely new game. So okay, pawn to d5. And uh, here it's already starting to get very, very, very interesting. It, it seems that it was um, uh, better to prepare it with c6. Uh, but you know that if you can play d5 with black and get away with it, that you should always play it. And here David says that he can get away with it. e captures, knight captures, and now queen to b3. Putting pressure on the knight here. Pawn to c6, and now rook to e1. Okay, nothing really happening here. We have knight to b4, uh, and now knight to e4. We have c captures on b5, a captures, and bishop to b5. Putting pressure on the knight here. Uh, knight g to f5. Putting pressure on the f7 pawn. And how do you deal with this? This is the... Uh, the real question. Now, it's very, very hard to, hard to deal with this move. Uh, best would be to play knight to h8 and just defend the f7 pawn. But here, queen to d7 was played, and believe it or not, Nodrebek is completely winning here, but this is so tricky that both of them missed the idea here. So feel free to pause the video and try to find what both of these uh, incredible grandmasters missed uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Knight Captors on F7. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, of course it is. This is what my uncle would play. How, how would a player like Nodrebek miss this move? And how would Navara uh, miss this move? How would they both miss Knight Captors on F7? if your uncle would play it. Well, uh, the reason is next. After rook captures on f7, of course, knight g5, adding more attackers to the pinned piece, knight to h8, defending, and now not knight captures on f7. Even though white will be better after knight captures on f7, the real move is queen captures on b4. That's that. And here black resigns. There's nothing black in play here. Uh, you're just down too much material, rook will be captured next, uh, and of course if the queen is captured, then it gets interesting, but still white is completely winning. Rook captures an a8 with check, bishop to d8, and now look at this, knight to e6. Just 
brutal going after the the bishop trying to win the queen and after bishop takes uh, and the bishop captures an e6 there's queen to c7 and now bishop to f4 the rook is pinned cannot capture and if the queen captures you're just gonna capture on d8 and deliver checkmate as the rook cannot move so here queen to b6 would have to be played uh you have to keep an eye on that uh, bishop on d6 uh, <clears throat> uh sorry on d8 and now bishop to g5 just putting pressure on the bishop on d8 uh h6 and now finally bishop captures on d8 and that's it uh i mean really uh, a line uh, that uh, belongs in a, in a book somewhere uh but i thought you guys should see it and after queen captures let's say bishop to c7 whatever you deliver a check after the king moves you just trade everything captures captures and captures and you have two bishops a rook and a pass pawn uh, against the queen of course a queen cannot uh, contest this position uh, but instead bishop to a3 was played which uh, is a good move so probably that's why noderbeck um uh, uh, decided to play it uh he uh will have bishop captures on b4 at some point with rook captures on a8 he did not find that queen captures on b4 idea uh but now uh now definitely you should move the knight back to h8 to defend the f7 pawn and uh, of course white will still be better for example knight to h8 Probably he was planning bishop captures, and after a captures, rook captures on a8, and after rook captures on a8, uh, now knight to c5 to attack the queen, and you can't really move the queen away from the defense of the f7 pawn, so you have to play queen to c7, and now after queen f3 attacking the bishop, bishop g6, and okay, white is still much, much better here, uh, probably objectively still winning, but... Uh, black uh, still uh, is forcing you to, to work for your meals so that's why the line that i've discussed uh, prior to this one was the way to go but here he goes rook a to d8 and now uh, Norbeck should just go for bishop captures on b4 which he does and now after a captures he has to play again knight captures on f7 but he doesn't see it uh, neither of them see knight captures on f7 in either of these positions because now uh, it's not the same as before, before you had that beautiful queen sacrifice, but here the idea is knight captures on f7, rook captures of course knight g5 to add more pressure to the rook, and once the knight defends, now you have rook to e5, and once the bishop moves, you will play rook a to e1, and the problem is there's uh, no move that black can play here. To give you an example, let's say you play rook f8, knight to e6 and uh now there's there's really no move that you can play everything is uh completely tied down uh white will just uh, uh gradually uh improve his position and uh j just crush black but uh yeah like i said uh, it's so tactical that even when i show you how how powerful the position is you still don't believe me uh, but uh, okay, here knight to c5 was played by Noderbeck attacking the queen, uh, but this sort of blunders the game for him because David plays uh, queen captures on d4. And uh, no, uh, queen captures on d4 uh, was supposed to be played, but David misses it. And the point is that um, after queen captures on d4, there's no good move bishop captures and knight captures simply don't work here and i doubt uh, that the bishop captures was the reason uh david uh, uh, uh did not go for queen to d4 he probably thought knight captures was incredibly strong but the reason knight captures on f7 doesn't work is this nasty rook to c8 move and now what do you what do you make of this move the knight here is hanging you can make all sorts of discoveries here that that are possible you can even go for knight to d6 with check king to h8 and now you capture the rook on c8 but now bishop captures on c5 a nice vision uh, threatens queen captures on f2 and also the knight really has no squares to uh, to go to so you're gonna have to move the king and now bishop captures on c8 and now uh, of course black is just uh, up uh, up in material he has a bishop and knight for a rook uh, and black will be completely winning here. Uh, but it seems that Noderbeck, uh, uh, you know, uh, is, is a Jedi master. He uh, he clouded um, uh, David's judgment and uh, he played queen to c7. He did not capture on d4. And now comes rook a to c1. And also probably why uh, David missed um, uh, that queen to c7 isn't good is that rook a to c1 is the only good move for Noderbeck. Uh, point being that, of course, you cannot start capturing uh, on c5 because there's, of course, bishop captures an f7 check that would win the queen on c5. So knight to f4 was played, which is the only good move for David. And now comes bishop captures an f7. Uh, again, you should prepare it with queen to e3 or rook to e5, but uh, Noderbeck played bishop captures 
Capers on f7 now uh, and king to h8. And again, uh, we are we are still playing. Of course, you don't capture with rook captures on f7 uh, due to this nasty knight to d3 discovery. <laughs> uh, the queen is hanging. Also, the knight is hanging, so you don't really have all that much to do. Knight captures on f4, and the next uh, you, you, you're still attacking the rook. Uh, too much stuff going on here. Black will not be able to defend. So after bishop captures on f7, king to h8 was played, and now queen to f3. Uh, we have pawn to h6, chasing away the knight, and now knight captures on b7. And believe it or not, the position is dead equal. There is... Uh, you know, a lot of moves that are possible here, uh, but only one move is good for Navarra, and he plays it. Knight to e2 with check. Forces the queen away from attacking the bishop, and of course the rook cannot capture due to uh, queen captures on c1, coming with check, so queen has to capture, otherwise you're just gonna blunder the rook here. So queen captures, and now comes queen captures on b7. Uh, and uh, uh, here, the, the only good move for Noderbeck, well... You could play a couple of moves. Queen to h5 is the only objectively good move. Uh, but uh, rook to c6 was played. And it looks like a beautiful rook lift. But the problem is, uh, David again calls his bluff and just plays bishop captures on d4. He says, you've got nothing here. And the situation on the clock is not is a little bit better. He has 27 minutes on the clock. Uh, David has some 14 minutes on the clock. And the problem is, uh, Noderbeck's idea might have been queen to h5 here. That's why he gave up the d4 pawn. Uh, but uh, you, you have nothing here. The, there's this tricky... Uh, he, he, unless you play bishop to h7, Noderbeck is winning. But if you play bishop to h7, there's just no way to reach the black king. Even if you play rook captures on h6, black can even capture. And after queen captures, yes, you're threatening checkmate. But uh, black happily gives back a little bit of material. And that's it. The attack is over. There's nothing more here. Knight captures on f7 with check. And the black will just be up to two full bishops. So that's the problem. So, okay. Noderbeck plays king to h1. And now it's actually David who is winning here. But only if he finds bishop to h7. Uh, but uh, he did not find it. Instead of bishop to... Uh, instead of this bishop to h7 move, he played rook captures on f7, which is perfectly fine. It's a winning move unless Noderbeck finds this move that no one will find. The, the, like uh, So many moves were missed here because it's an incredibly sharp tactical game. But this move, if any of you find that uh, you, uh, you you know, you, you should be playing the, the Prague uh, uh, Chess Festival, the master section. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that David missed here and the only move that wins the game for Noderbeck. Why? I'll give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being, uh, well, uh, playing at the strength of a grandmaster. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to d6. Now, tell the truth, uh, of course, you did not find this move. Uh, if if you have uh, you know write in the, write it in the comment section. I, I I will click the little heart button because you really deserve it, and it's the least I could do. I can do. Uh, and now the problem is you can take the knight, you can take the rook, which is great. You're already up a piece, so if you can take more, it's gonna be great. But let's see what happens if you capture the g5 knight. Uh, well, then just rook captures on d8 with check, and when you move the king, queen, ca queen to h5 is checkmate. That's all there is to it. So the knight cannot be captured. How about the rook? Let's take the rook. If you capture the rook, then comes queen to e8 with check, and once you move the rook, queen captures on f8 is checkmate as the knight covers the h7 square. So, okay, obviously you cannot take more material, but we said you don't need more material. You're already up material, so maybe you can give back a little bit of material. Let's say you play rook f to f8. You just uh, defend the back rank because really the back rank is the issue here. Well, now comes rook captures on d8. And again, nothing. Rook captures, you sacrifice the queen, rook captures, and the rook captures his checkmate as the knight covers the h7 square. So there is nothing. You cannot take the knight, you cannot take the rook, you cannot defend on the on the, on the the 8th rank. Uh, rook to c8 is played, uh, trying to avoid the capture as long as you cannot trade a, a pair of rooks, then there's no back rank checkmate. Uh, but now just knight captures on f7 with check. Uh, even this is sufficient, and you cannot even decline the knight. If you play something like king to h7, then look at this, knight to g5 check. 
h captures queen to h5 check king to g8 and rook to e8 with check uh queen covers f7 so the only move is to capture the rook and now a, a nice set of checks here check 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 and of course rook to d8 is checkmate so after knight captures on f7 with check queen captures on f7 was played and now just rook captures on d4 and after all this madness Noderbeck is just up the exchange up a pawn and uh, he has a passed b pawn but okay uh, Navarra still has a pass B on himself, so he plays B3. We have B6, uh, Rook to C2, attacking Noderbeck's queen, queen to F3. Noderbeck's position just too strong, pawn to B2, pawn to B7. And now you don't have time for Rook to C1 because B8 comes with check. So queen to F8, guarding the queening square, but now just Rook D to D1. And with the B1 square covered, uh, it's time for David to call it a day. He did play Rook to C5, trying to put the Rook behind the pass pawn, but here just queen to B3. And he was in this position on move 36 that David Navarra resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So incredibly, incredibly sharp tactical game where both uh, uh, Noderbeck and David were winning at some point in the game, uh, even at multiple points in the game. Uh, but in the end, Noderbeck just uh, comes out on top due to that spectacular rook to d6 move. And of course, here you resign that the b2 pawn will be captured, the b7 pawn will not. And then you're just up uh, the exchange and you have a pass pawn on b7. Uh, of course, uh, completely winning. Uh, but I mean, look at this uh, one more time. Look at this. Uh, look at this move. Uh, I'm pretty sure Noderbeck saw it when he played this rook to c6 move. That's why uh, the engine says that it's not maybe the best. But uh, if you don't see what he's planning, if you don't see this, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, bishop to h7 is winning for for David here. But uh, if you don't see this rook to d6 move, then of course you just take the free material and you you win the game. But here, rook d6. What what a move! Wow. And uh, not only does Noderbeck win the game and uh, takes the lead in the uh, Prague Chess Festival Master section, uh, look at this. These are the, uh, the uh, no, sorry, these are not. Uh, let me just, uh, let me just, these are the old ones. Let me just load up the new ones. So these are the, the world top 13, okay? Uh, currently on the live ratings list, uh, Noderbeck jumps up to, to world number 8. He is now at 2757 only uh, all, uh, less than a point away from uh, fr from Yanni Pomnishi. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you, uh, all, all of you are, are thinking the same. Noderbeck definitely belongs in the candidates tournament, but uh, you know, uh, also, also does Anish Giri and he's also not playing. So yeah, that's why we have a qualification uh, method. You have to qualify for the candidates tournament and uh, then you, you, you're you eligible to play. Or we, we could just increase it, you know, maybe to 12 players, but, you know, we already have it uh, eight players for a very long time and it's, it's worked out well for us. But yeah, uh, definitely uh, everyone would love to see him in the candidates and really uh, I do hope that he, he qualifies for the next one. But there are so many incredible young players that uh, we want to see in there. Uh, so that's why it's important to qualify. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game and a little bit of extra info about their ratings. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Daniel Heist, uh, Anthony Palumbi, Matthew Witten, Kristen is the best wife, uh, and Chris Karskadan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos. Sarah, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the Prague Chess Festival until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day, and probably I will show the Prague uh, versus Rapport game next, uh, also a wild one. Uh, see you soon.